And one guy who went a little further this weekend is the great Alexander Usyk. Adds to his Olympic gold medal, unified cruiserweight champion, and now unified and undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, the great Alexander Usyk. Incredible performance from start to finish. Maybe he gave up two or three rounds, I would say, conservatively. We got it right. We'll, we got it right. We got it right. We got it. The, we got it right. And you hit the nail right on the head. You said he was going to win it. He did it. He did everything that we expected him to do. He behaved like a champion all night long, and he took it to Joshua, and you called it exactly right. You had Usyk from the beginning, and he delivered. First of all, uh, you know, he followed in the footsteps, and I had talked about that, of the greatest before, up to that point, the greatest cruiserweight champion of all time, Evander Holyfield, who was undefeated like Usyk and went on, stepped up and fought for the heavyweight title and won the heavyweight championship, which a lot of people didn't think he could do. And he was an underdog too, just like Usyk was. And people thought he couldn't do it. He was too small. And so he followed in pretty damn good footsteps. And as I said it, I purposely said it, where he followed with, Holyfield, who had been the greatest cruiserweight champ, had been, because now Uzik might also be the greatest cruiserweight champ of all time, uh, and now he's gone and added the heavyweight belt and and belts uh, to to his collection. I don't even know how many belts that that was for. Was it for one, two, twenty, uh, eighteen? I, I I don't even know. I can't keep track of that. You need a mathematician uh, to keep track of these things. I don't know how many. Whoa, what, how many? <laughs> How many was it for? Was it was it for one or two belts, Ken? I think it was four. Three. It was for three. WBA, WBO, and IBF. And the difference right from the beginning of the fight, I get right down to the nitty gritty, was the jab. You know, Usyk, and I, I tweeted out to my man, Rob, and he put it right out there. Uh, too bad they couldn't get it in the corner of Joshua. Might have helped a little bit. But... He was snapping his jab, Usyk. He was using it. He was snapping it. You know, southpaw jab from the the opposite side, from the right side. But he was snapping the jab out while Joshua was pushing it out. When you push it out, that's a polygraph test. See, I'm going to tell you something, Ken. When you're pushing your jab, that that is secret code for without having to verbalize it, you're telling the other guy, I'm looking to hit you with the right hand. Yeah, if you're orthodox. I'm looking to hit you with one punch with the power punch because I'm just trying to set you up. And um, he pushed it. And... Usyk was snapping his. So that's number one. That's number one. And and when you're snapping, you're setting the table to eat. And Usyk was setting the table with his right hand jab to eat with the left hand. That's what he did. He went and ate. Matter of fact, he gave he gave Joshua a stomach ache. You with those left hands. He 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 did. He he gave him he gave him some uh, indigestion. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he was controlling the fight. Uh, his defense was good. I thought he could have moved, he being Usyk, he could have moved to his right a little more because when he did stand in front or move to his left, sometimes the right hand caught him. He needed to move. Uh, he never got caught like bang, like bang, like real, real clean. Um, again, that might have been because Joshua was showing him that he was looking for too much instead of snapping the jab and keeping him busy with a snappy jab where he wouldn't have had the eyesight to see the right hand coming, you know, uh, and and he, the rhythm would have been better for Joshua. Uh, the other thing was he, Usyk, again, Usyk, I thought he could have moved to his right a little bit more, away from the right hand, um, and used his jab on that side a little bit more. And you know what? There's a lot of people, but it's okay. I'm going to, as I always do, I'm going to say what I feel. He could have followed up a little more even earlier. He might have got a stoppage. But I don't blame him for not doing it because he was following the rules or the, the orders of his corner, and it was right. <laughs> don't give the big guy the one chance he had the right hand to land, you know, to hurt you, to stop the fight, to end the fight immediately, to pull the plug on it all. So he, he was being smart. He was being safe. He was being calculating. Uh, he, he, but I still, I'll say it again, he could have went for it, even in the third round when he shook him up. I think it was the third round. But then again, he might have been cheated out of six seconds at the end too 
because there's a video floating around that <laughs> that his manager Agus Clemens put out there that that seems to show that six seconds would take it off the clock somehow. You know, any of you guys find that six seconds, my beloved fans out there? Hey, I love you. Put that in the crumpets just for one minute. One minute. Any of you guys find that six seconds out there? I don't, okay, I'm just wondering. Is it? But I don't know. Is it? Is it out there? So, uh, look, maybe, maybe it was legitimate. Maybe the clock didn't sync up with the official clock. We don't know for sure. You'd have to sit there with a three-minute, you know, timer, and and you would have to time the whole round to see whether or not six seconds were taken off. But again, his manager put out a video that seems to show that they rang the bell six seconds short. I noticed it in real time. I thought the same thing. Like, what the hell? They just said nine seconds. The bell's ringing. What's going on here? And, and he had him in trouble. He had him. He had him in trouble, trouble. Uh, against the ropes. And listen, Joshua was moving his head defensively, trying to survive, and he did survive. But I thought right there is a good spot to just bury one to the body. Bang! Bury one to the body of your Uzik, you know, and freeze that head movement. Then go upstairs and finish. That's how I teach fighters to finish a guy, you know, because they're going to survive. They're going to move their head. When they're hurt, they're automatically going to move their head to try to survive. That's what they're going to so hit. So don't chase what's moving. Hit what's not moving, the body, and then freeze the head movement by doing that. But again... He, uh, I thought Joshua missed the boat. He didn't have as good a game plan, obviously. It seemed like his game plan was just go in there, be the bigger guy, and land the right hand, go home. You know, there wasn't enough to it. And and that hurt him. Uh, Usyk had a better game plan. Also, he missed the boat, Mr. Joshua, when he didn't go to the body more. There was one round when he went to the body and it affected the smaller man. There's no better way to impose your strength and advantage in that area on a smaller man than to go to the smaller man's body. Yes. I, I thought he should have. I should thought that because that would have taken some of the air out of the tires because he was using those wheels real well. And it would have taken some of the air out of those legs, out of those wheels a little bit, slowed him down a little bit, uh, made him a little easier to catch. Uh made Usyk a little easier to catch. So I thought he missed a boat in a few areas where of preparation where he should have been prepared, especially with the jab, not using the jab to the chest, not snapping it out enough. Um, it was an ebb and flow fight. It was a back and forth. I thought that Usyk got out to the first three. The, the judges, it looks like they might have been, uh, they might have been trying to rob the guy, maybe, because... <laughs> Because the first three rounds, I thought really, I thought it was kind of easy that Usyk won the first three rounds, and they they giving rounds to Joshua. I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. It was be be friendly to a Brit day, right? I, I I'm not sure. But whatever it was, um, but I, I thought he won the first three rounds. Then I thought Joshua won his first round in the fourth, and then I thought it was like back and forth a little bit. I I thought that uh, that I thought that. Usyk was never behind. It was always it was always Joshua trying to catch up. But he was evening it up. He caught up. It was even. You know, it was back and forth like that, ebb and flow. And then every he never allowed Joshua to keep the momentum. Every time that was a key. Every time Joshua came back and evened it up, which he did, uh, then Usyk would with that competitiveness, that you know, that that just understanding, like I said, like I did say, he knew how to win. That's a talent. That's an ability. That that is it, it. That that is a trait that he had going in that I thought was very important. People downplayed it, or people didn't even look at it. To be honest, he knew how to win. This guy knew how to win. He never let him get that momentum, and then finally it was even, even, even you know, eight, nine, right around nine rounds, and then all of a sudden he took the momentum. He just took control, and he and he just swept those last three rounds. He swept them, and he almost stopped them. He almost stopped. He'd be an Usyk, obviously. At the end of the day, here's here's the thing. It's going to cause a little ripples out there across the pond, but it's fair, I think. Uh, do we give all the credit to Usyk, which I do. I do. 
But do we also say that the so-called pundits, the experts out there, there's so many of them, oh my God, uh, that know so much, so much, so much, um, that maybe, maybe, maybe they overrated this man, Joshua, maybe. Uh, that uh, When we look at the record, who did he beat? He beat a 40-year-old Klitschko. He got dropped by him. He got off the floor. I give him all the credit in the world because Klitschko could punch with that right hand even at 40. But he got off the floor and he stopped Klitschko. Okay. Um, and Klitschko been knocked out, what, four times, five times in his career? Career, whatever but but Klitschko was a dominant heavyweight for 10 years um with whoever was there but who did he beat who who, who was he beaten he got he beat he got knocked out by Ruiz this is the same Ruiz who well, he, and Ruiz took the fight on short notice but he came back and he redeemed himself against Ruiz he did give him credit for that he won he beat him he reinvented himself everything he also struggled with a Joseph Parker look Parker's a big strong guy who moves through his legs boxes one dimensional but he boxed a little bit that should have been a kind of pre-warning it was to me it helped me pick Usyk because when I looked at the Joseph Parker where he boxed not nearly as efficiently as Usyk not nearly with the skills Usyk has with the legs Usyk has or the fluidity that Usyk has or the dimensions that Usyk has but Parker used his legs a little bit moved a little bit he went 12 rounds with Joshua I don't know was it fair to say he gave him trouble I don't know if he gave him trouble but he was in there he was competitive and that could have been a warning, a precursor to tell you, hey, wait a minute. If Parker did this, what is Uza going to be able to do? I know he's not a big heavyweight, uh, but still, he's a better all-around fighter. He's got better legs than him. So what's he going to do if, if, if Parker showed the blueprint that you could do that? You could box and give him a little trouble. What's he going to do? Not to mention what Ruiz did to him. So what? Did, so how good was, at the end of the day, how good was Joshua? I mean, really, they, I know the Brits love their guys, and I, I'm with you. I'm not joking around. I'm not trying to tease you right now. But let's be honest. How good? How good? Look, at the end of the day, Uzuk was good. <laughs> Uzuk was good. Uzuk was damn good. Um, but maybe, maybe Joshua, we... We built them. I didn't, but maybe, maybe everyone built them up, or some people built them up. Maybe a little bit too much, uh, and but at the end of the day, again, all hats off to Uzik. Uh, he goes over there into enemy territory. You know, he uh, he 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 beats the guy up. He beats up the judges. He beats everyone up. You know what I mean? And and then he. Uh, and then he's gracious about it. He's gracious about it. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's a man easy to root for. He's a winner. <laughs>